Here's another problem. Now, uh, this problem is not a problem that involves calculations. It's a conceptual problem. Uh, we should be able to solve this by just thinking about the problem um, or by thinking and, and writing down um, our, our intuitions about the problem, but we shouldn't have to do any calculations here or use any equations. So again, we have another problem here where there's a person standing on a cliff. So here's the person standing on the edge of a cliff. Uh, here's the ground. Uh, and let's consider two um, possible experiments. The person could drop an object from rest. They could drop the object and then it then hits the ground. Let's call that object A. And then in another experiment, instead of dropping the object, they throw it down at the ground. So this person over here is going to drop object A so that it drops and hits the ground, dropping it from rest. And object B, they're going to throw down at the ground. And the question is, which object is going to be moving faster when it hits the ground? Which object is going to be moving faster when it hits the ground? Object A, which was dropped from rest, or object B, which was thrown down from the cliff towards the ground? So both of these objects are starting at the height of the cliff, uh, but one is being dropped from rest and hitting the ground eventually, and object B is being thrown down at the ground and then hitting the ground. So please pause the video and try to figure out conceptually, without using equations, which of these two objects would be moving faster uh, when they hit the ground. Uh, I really hope that you paused the video and gave that some thought. Uh, remember, please, to pause the video and give some thought to each problem before you proceed. Uh, well, let's try drawing the paths here. Uh, so we have object A, which is starting here, and then moving down to the ground. It's always a good idea to draw the path. Here's object A. And object A, uh, and then we have object B, which is following basically the same type of path. Uh, but object B was thrown down, and object A is starting from rest. Well, it should be kind of intuitive, I think, that since object B started with a greater speed, um, and what's going to be happening is it goes down to the ground. Why don't we draw the velocity and acceleration vector? So for both of these objects, the velocity is moving, is pointing down, and the acceleration is down uh, from gravity. But we know that when the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, you're speeding up. So both of these objects are going to be speeding up. Um, but object A is speeding up from rest from zero meters per second. And I didn't tell you what the initial speed was from object B, um, but we know that it didn't start from rest. Um, so however fast object A ends up moving when it hits the ground, object B is going to be moving faster because it just started at a greater speed. So I think that should have been a pretty easy problem. It should have been pretty obvious that if you start from rest and then you start speeding up, um, you're not going to end up going as fast as object B because object B had already started with a certain speed and then gravity is going to make it go even faster. So I think it should be pretty clear here that object B is the answer. Object B is going to be moving faster when it hits the ground because it already had started with a certain downward speed, whereas object A um, had been dropped from rest. Let me remind you that, of course, what this question is asking about is which object is moving faster the instant before it hits the ground. Obviously, the instant after they hit the ground, they're both motionless because they're on the ground. Uh, but that's not the kind of thing that we're focusing on in kinematics. Remember that the instant after they've hit the ground, um, the only force isn't gravity anymore. Um, after they've hit the ground, there's also a force from the ground. Well, that would not be a normal free fall problem. We want to be analyzing the instant before they hit the ground. The instant before they hit the ground, they're still both under the influence only of gravity. So that's what this question is really asking. Which object is moving faster the instant before they hit the ground? And the answer again was B. Uh, because um, B had already been moving towards the ground when it started, so um, gravity is going to make it, uh, is going to speed it up, so it's going even faster when it hits the ground, whereas um, object A is just starting from zero, so it's never going to reach the same speed as object B if they go the same distance. Now let's make a different comparison. Now I want you to compare object B and object C. Now, both of these objects are being thrown down from the cliff. Both of these objects are being thrown from the cliff towards the ground. Object B is being thrown down at an initial speed of 3 meters per second, and object C is being thrown down at an initial speed of 5 meters per second. Object B is being thrown down from the cliff at an initial speed of 3 meters per second, and object C is being thrown down from the cliff at an initial speed of 5 meters per second. And I'm asking you the same question. Which object is moving faster when it hits the ground? I hope that you paused the video and gave that some thought. Uh, and 
again, we shouldn't need any equations for that. Uh, we can draw our paths. Object B starts at the cliff height and moves down until it reaches the ground. Obviously, its velocity is downwards and its acceleration is downwards, and it started at 3 meters per second. That's object B. And then object C has basically the same path, except that it started at 5 meters per second. It's always a good idea to draw the path. Even though we're not using any equations, we should still go through our step one and draw the path of the object. Well, we know that both of these objects are going to be speeding up. Gravity is going to be speeding both of these objects up because their accelerations are parallel to their velocity. And they're both going the same distance, so whichever started at the greater speed should be ending up at the greater speed, right? So this object over here um, is starting at 5 meters per second down. Uh, and this is only starting at 3 meters per second down. So if gravity is speeding both of them up, gravity is going to be able to speed this one up more than it's going to be able to speed up object B. I think that should be pretty straightforward. Obviously, the object that was thrown down at the greater speed is going to reach the greater speed. That's pretty much common sense. The object that was thrown down at the greater speed is the object that's going to eventually reach the greater speed. So the answer to this question was C. Object C will hit the ground moving faster than object B. Since object C started at a greater speed, it makes sense that gravity is going to end up bringing it to a greater speed the instant before it hits the ground. So object C would be moving faster. Here's another conceptual question. Now we're comparing object B and object D. I hope you can see this is a D, object D and object B. Now again, both of these are being thrown from the cliff. Both of these are starting at the cliff and ending up hitting the ground. Um, object B, again, is being thrown down from the cliff at 3 meters per second. But now object D is being thrown up at 3 meters per second. Object D is being thrown up. We know that eventually, though, object D is still going to hit the ground. Whatever goes up must come down. So object D is going to be thrown up at 3 meters per second, move up, and then eventually fall back down and hit the ground. So both of these will eventually hit the ground, but object B starts moving towards the ground at 3 meters per second, whereas object D is thrown up at 3 meters per second. And the question is still, which object is moving faster when it hits the ground? So I hope that that question is clear again. Both of these objects are being thrown from the cliff. Object B is being thrown straight down at 3 meters per second, and object D is being thrown straight up at 3 meters per second. Uh, but eventually, both of them are going to hit the ground. Well, which object is going to be moving faster when it hits the ground? Please pause the video and give this problem some careful thought before you proceed. You shouldn't need any equations for this. You should be able to use some um, uh, conceptual um, ideas, and um, you should be able to solve this conceptually using the information that we've learned uh, previously in these videos. Please pause the video then and try to answer this question. Well, I hope you gave that some thought. Um, and I hope that one of the things that you did was draw the path for both objects. In fact, if you did not draw the path for both objects, why don't you pause the video and do that right now? Pause the video and make sure that you've carefully um, drawn and labeled the paths for both objects. Okay, so I hope that you tried drawing the paths. Well, actually, the path for object B should be easy because we've already drawn that before. Here's our path for object B. We know it's starting here and moving down until it reaches the ground. Its velocity is downwards, its acceleration is downwards, and we know it started at 3 meters per second downwards. Let's actually choose a positive direction now. Uh, I'm going to choose up to be the positive direction. Um, even though this is moving downwards, we know that object D is moving both up and down. When you're considering both upwards and downwards motion, it's probably most intuitive to choose up as your positive direction. Since object D is moving both up and down, it's probably most intuitive to choose up as our positive direction. So that means that object B was thrown down at a speed at a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. So object B's initial velocity was negative 3 meters per second, and it's going to be going faster when it hits the ground. Now let's think about object D. Now we know that originally object D was moving up until it reached its peak. And then 
and started moving down until it hit the ground. So here's the path for object D. Object D. Remember that, of course, the upward path and the downward path are really in the same place, but we're drawing them in different places just so it's easier to see them. All right, now let's try to label as much as we can about the path of object D. Uh, well, we certainly know that originally object D was moving at 3 meters per second. And we know that object D was thrown up, which we've chosen as our positive direction. So object D's original velocity was positive 3 meters per second. Positive 3 meters per second at this point. And we know that in this region, it's moving up and accelerating down. So those are its velocity and acceleration vectors. And then down on the downward portion, its velocity is down and its acceleration is still down. 